Hi everyone. It's been a little bit, but I'm going to try to do these short little blurbs more often. I'm going to tell you a little secret before we begin anything today. I used to have to edit my videos so much, I just stopped doing them because of my speech impediment. For those of you who don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, you might not know this, but God did a dramatic healing in my life about a month ago. A little bit, about six weeks ago, the healing journey b began, but in one area that you guys will notice, my speech. I've lived with a speech impediment all of my life, and it was starting to get really bad, to the point that I just didn't want to do videos anymore. Uh, because I had edited them so much. I still got a little bit there, but um, God's healing it even some more. And I'm not going to edit anymore with these little blurbs that I do now and again. I might if there's a siren go by or that kind of thing. But welcome to my little YouTube studio, which is actually at my kitchen table with a little screen between that and my living room making life a little bit more easier as well i don't have to tidy up behind what's hiding behind the screen but today let's get back to what i'm really here about lately i've been thinking a lot and usually i get into trouble when i think but in this case i've been reading the bible every year throughout the year every single day following the daily audio bible and about a month ago, we were in the book of John, and we came across a very familiar passage. It's one of the most important passages in the whole New Testament because it was Jesus' last words on earth that he spoke to his disciples that were right in front of him face to face, and he left us with charges in that about uh, chapter 14 to about chapter 17. Uh, I would encourage you, if you're not reading your Bible at all that much, if you're really not into your Bible, if you're going to center in on something, read that passage. Even read it out loud to yourself from a translation that you really can understand well. You, know, you may have been taught that the King James Version is your only Bible. Go for that for your Bible study, yes. But I would encourage you to read it as if Jesus was sitting at the table with you, talking with you. And I doubt that Jesus speaks with these and thous anymore. Maybe he did during the time of King James, but we don't use that in our everyday language. So he wants to speak to your heart. And that's what we're all about today. We're talking about the heart. So in John 15, verse 9, we're going to start at. So this is a scoop. This is Jesus' last charge. He knows what's going to be happening to him within a few hours. He also knows that his disciples are not getting the hint at all. Every time that Jesus even says bluntly, look, we're going to Jerusalem where I am going to be tortured and I am going to be killed. It still goes over their, at their head because they had this preconceived idea in their head that Jesus was a Messiah. Hey, they got that point right. But they thought that Jesus, as a Messiah, was going to come in and get rid of the Romans, get rid of corruption, and then ride off into the sunset victorious king. And his throne would be in Jerusalem. That wasn't about to happen. And Jesus kept on telling them that, but they weren't getting it. So again, in John, uh, about started chapter 13 to about chapter 16, 17, it's what we call the Last Supper. Jesus knows it's the Last Supper. They're not getting the hint yet. So Jesus tells them a whole bunch of stuff. Good stuff, oh my gosh. If you guys haven't read this passage for a while, please do. But anyhow, so Jesus, at the end of him telling them a whole bunch of stuff, he says in verse 9 of John 15, I love each of you with the same love that the Father loves me. You must continually let my love nourish your hearts. If you keep my commands, you will live in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands 
for I continually live nourished and empowered by his love. My purpose for telling you these things is so that the joy that I experience will fill your hearts with overflowing gladness. So this is my command. Love each other deeply as much as I have loved you. For the greatest love of all is a love that sacrifices all. And this great love is demonstrated when a person sacrifices his love for friends. Jesus didn't mince any words. He used the word command. This is my commandment. I command you. He's not saying this is a good idea. He's not saying this is the ideal that I kind of hope that you'll get to, but don't worry if you're not there yet, that's okay. It's just a suggestion after all. No, Jesus says bluntly, and he, I don't really can't think of another passage where Jesus uses the word, I command you, or this is my command to you. He tells us a whole lot of things to love one another, the Sermon on the Mount, all of that, but this is, I command you. Uh, so he's making his disciples perk up his ears. And Jesus didn't just say this, I command you. He actually demonstrated this, how to do this within a few short hours after those words came out of his mouth. And one of the things that Jesus was obedient to until his last breath on earth was loving one another. And when Jesus spoke those words, he was looking at the 12 disciples. People, many of them he'd been running with for three years. He knew them inside and out. Even before Peter betrayed Jesus by denying him within a few hours, Peter was already doing stuff that was, you know, putting his foot in his mouth a heck of a lot. Then there was Judas, who was known to be stealing things from the com community fund. Um, and yet Jesus still loved him. And yet he knew when he was feasting with Judas at the Passover, and he passes him the Passover bread of fellowship, he looked Judas in the eye and still loved him, even though he knew Judas had already betrayed him. And he, Jesus had a good idea of what was coming down the road. Then there were James and John. Can you imagine hanging around those guys? James and John would irritate me because then they got their mom in on, on the gig. We're the greatest. We want to sit beside Jesus. We, you know, like the... Um, ego that these guys had and the audacity that they had was pretty remarkable. And then there was Andrew and the rest of them who just didn't have a clue half the time of what was going on. I can imagine Jesus got irritated. There's nothing, there's nothing sinful with being irritated. It's what we do with our heart posture that leads us into sin. And Jesus sinned not, but he loved them. He loved them so much that they were his great joy. All of their flaws, all the things that irritated them, all the things that they know that he knew that they did, and all the things that he knew he was going to have to suffer on their behalf, even though he knew his by his Old Testament inside and out. Of course he, he, he would. He was trained well in the um, Jewish schools even though he knew as a messiah he would be abandoned by those people who swore their allegiance to him time and time again jesus still loved them so today when jesus says this is my command that you love one another as i have loved you it's not that he hasn't walked the walk and it's not that he will leave us on our own to love that person who irritates you, to love and to bless that brother in Christ whose political stance drives you nuts, or that sister in Christ who is always saying the wrong thing in the most wrong time, 
or that person who cuts you off in traffic and then you see them at church because they wanted to get a better parking spot than you. This is when you've got the choice. I will love that person with the love that Christ has given me. So my challenge for all of us today is that when we are given a situation where we are finding it difficult to choose to truly love from our heart and not just with that fake little smile on our face, when we choose to say to Jesus, Jesus, I am not suffering in any way the same way that you did, but I need your help right now to love this individual. Trust Jesus that he will give you the strength because there is nothing that Jesus would ever ask of us that he would not give us the grace and the strength to actually do it. So I bless you in Jesus' name, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.